Today's setup is sponsored by Philips Hue. Yo guys, Jonathan here, and this color changing setup blew my mind, and I think it's gonna blow yours too. So this setup's been in the works for a couple weeks now. I've almost lost my mind trying to perfect it, but I think I got it. Now before I hop into the how-to, giving you a quick rundown of the setup, the star of the show is an 85-inch monster 4K HDR TV from Sony. It's not OLED, so it's not the latest and greatest, but for the price, it looks amazing, and more importantly, it fills the wall beautifully. The console is from Wade Logan. It's clean, it's simple, it's minimal, but more importantly, it does a fantastic job of housing everything together. In this case, because the setup is centered around color and lighting, I love the fact that you can see directly through the front panels on the console. It adds this awesome layer of ambience. Inside the console is the Mac Mini, the greatest of all time, so if you missed that video, definitely check it out. An Asus external Blu-ray drive, which isn't used to play Blu-rays back, but rather rip them directly onto the Mac Mini and then run into a Plex server. Next to that is an Xbox One X Project Scorpio Edition, and finally on top of that, which is kind of hard to see, is an Apple TV 4K. Now the heart and soul of the audio setup is the Martin Logan Motion Vision X. It's a little pricey, but oh my god, it sounds incredible. Yes, those are two HomePods left and right in stereo. They don't sound better than the sound bar, but they're also about half the price, which is pretty impressive. And I think for the most part, if you just want to listen to music, it's kind of the go-to option, but definitely for movies, the sound bar is the way to go. Now, as far as the Philips Hue setup, behind the TV is one strip with four extensions. Below that are two Philips Hue blooms. Those are kind of shooting up towards the TV, filling everything in. Inside the console are two Philips Hue Go's, and on the back of the media console is one more Philips Hue strip, which kind of rounds everything out. Now, as far as how I'm controlling everything, it's an Apple Magic keyboard with Magic Trackpad 2, and it's sandwiched together with this awesome little 12 South gadget that makes it perfect to use on the couch. Now, all this is happening because of the Philips Hue Sync app, which just dropped recently, and the more and more I've messed with it, the more it blew my mind. You will need a computer to run this, and it will work on both Mac and PC. It's not gonna work on Apple TV or any kind of streaming box or stick. Now, this won't work with streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, iTunes, and that's because of copyright DRM. When you try to play it, it thinks you're trying to pirate the movie. So hopefully, in the future, those companies will work with Philips to make that happen. But in the meantime, an amazing workaround and setup is with Plex. So to rip Blu-rays, the setup is pretty simple. I grabbed an Asus Blu-ray player for about 100 bucks on Amazon, and I use that in conjunction with Make MKV. If you caught my Mac Mini video, the time to rip a Blu-ray is only about 20, 25 minutes, so it's not bad at all, way less time consuming than I ever would have imagined. Now, if you wanna get into 4K Blu-ray ripping, it's possible, but it's a lot of work. You gotta get these custom codes, so more trouble than it's worth for me right now, but I'll drop some resources down below if you wanna do that yourself. So as you can see, my Plex collection, it's not amazing, but it's steadily growing, and it's also created this new sick addiction. More importantly though, it works amazing with Philips Hue Sync. To give you guys a quick rundown of the software, there are four modes. Scenes, games, music, and movies. There are four intensity modes, subtle, moderate, high, and intense. Honestly, as cool as it is to use this in conjunction with movies, music is amazing. When you're using this in conjunction with music, you have five color palettes to choose from. I think four is probably my favorite. It has a ton of blues and as you can tell, I like blue. If you've used third-party apps in the past to get this effect, it used a microphone and it always felt a little laggy, a little slow, but this responds in real time and it is crazy impressive. Now, once you have the Hue Sync app installed on your computer, next you wanna head over to the Hue app on your phone or tablet, hop over to the settings section and then select entertainment areas. This is where you're gonna set every light that you want in that section. What's awesome is you can actually see how that looks in the environment and move the lights so they best react to the scene. You can see the TV, the couch. So in my case, everything is pretty heavily centered around the TV, but more importantly, you can fine tune everything so it works perfectly. From there, once you have everything configured, it is time to enjoy the light show. 
Now, the one question I've seen pop up a ton is, is this distracting while you're watching a movie? And honestly, it can be at first, especially when you're kind of looking for those lights to perform, but the more and more you get used to it and actually focus on the movie, it almost becomes a secondary enhancement that you would definitely miss if it was gone. In this case, it is definitely exaggerated on the extreme side of what you can do. More than likely, you're not gonna need this many lights or this many colors. If you want to though, it looks amazing, or you can tone it down. The beautiful part about this is it can all be custom to your taste. So yeah, that's a setup. It's way, way more fun than I ever thought it would be. And as much as I thought I was in this kind of streaming, non-physical media world, it kind of brought me back to my inner geek, which is really cool. If you missed my Mac mini video, that's kind of the centerpiece of the setup and how everything runs. That video is here and I will catch you guys later.